guys. Um, just before I get started, in case I don't get a proper chance to thank um, the LMGI for getting me over here. Thank you so much, guys. This has been a real pleasure. I had a very good day yesterday. And um, I'm loving Vancouver. And um, the welcome couldn't have been warmer on every front from the LMGI, from the Directors Guild of Canada, British Columbia. And it's uh, very exciting to be part of this entire process here. So thank you. I'm going to talk to you mostly about my time on Game of Thrones. Um, it's what I've been doing for the last decade. I was one of the first scouts on in 2008. Um, got the script, was very, very excited, and hit the road. The first slide I'd like to show you is a place called the Dark Hedges, which um, the reason why I'm highlighting it is because this place showed me that from a creative perspective, it's really possible to go back to a place again and again and re-photograph it until you feel like you've actually got the essence of the place. So if you don't get it the first time or the second time, just go back. When I was photographing at this time, there wasn't actually even a requirement for it in the script. I was just going out to photograph a cool road. And I think that's important as locations people is that you are always aware of what's around you. You're always scouting. You never kind of shut down completely. You're always looking at a bit of graffiti. You're looking at a really cool road. What's that gonna be for one day? And you're saving and remembering I think that cataloging process, the fact that I was able to kind of go and do that and then sell the location three or four years later on, kind of gave me real confidence that I was actually doing this for myself to make pretty things and bring them to shows. And that kind of enabled my confidence levels to really boost from a creative perspective to bring things to the show on my own terms. Another cheat location that we were required to get, um, regularly in the show we were doing transfers of main characters between different geographies in the show. Um, so we were trying to show terrain, and regularly I was asked to cheat Africa in Northern Ireland, which is kind of tough. Um, eventually I came across this lovely valley, which was a few valleys in from the Antrim Plateau, and everything else was completely lush green. And it was a combination of redriving the area again and again, and a bit of Google Earth finding an area that just looked particularly purple compared to everything around it. And I think that's the link here to technology and science, is the methods of choosing and methods of scouting are changing slightly. Yes, you can drive, you can helicopter, but actually it's a great tool on the internet too, is to look at things from an aerial view. That was the first location that really brought the scale of what we were doing to mind with me. And was the last time we used pickups and trailers because we were just too big for that. We moved to tractors and trailers double axle trailers um, to fit the crew into, to move very quickly onto location for the fast days. So that's the Shilinavogi area. With the Hound and Aria traveling through seasons three and four, um, I was continually asked to find connective tissue to show their journey progressing. So you're looking for kind of key geographical milestones in Westeros linked to Belfast. And as they got closer towards the Erie, so my scouting moved down to the Mourns to match their journey. So I needed a mountainous hint of the change in the journey. Lovely 150-year-old farmhouse with nothing to do to it really, apart from maybe a little bit of thatching to be put on top of the zinc roof. The art department set deck had nothing to do really. It was all there. So one that I'm proud of because it really just brought the story alive without much addition required. This one's a bit more generic, um, just to move the conversation from natural beauty and landscapes just to a bit more architecture of what you can find and how I interacted with architecture on the show. This is Myra Castle Tunnel, um, which again, I was actually photographing just for fun. <laughs> and I love the way it looked pre-lit. I love the autumn leaves on the ground. I love the symmetry of the lighting. I love the textures on the walls. It's a great example to me of how often in the Game of Thrones project, the location that got found would regularly dictate the way the sets ended up looking. So our art department and construction guys would often, once we'd established something like that, they'd ask for a squeeze, which is just the plaster impression of the texture, and then they'd knock out their panels, and the sets would start to manage the locations that were found, which is, I think, a really nice example of us driving the creative process. There's lots of those tunnels, and you just have to look for them, but, and, and they're great to use. A lot of them are listed, but you can do incredible things with them. To take it away from the pretty pictures and bring it back down to a bit more 
of a practical location management. Our department was instrumentally involved in the building technique of a lot of the really big builds. And um, we hinted in the panel earlier on that we sometimes take on things that aren't necessarily our ambit, but we do drive other departments. So the point I'm making here is that we often integrate and push and supervise not just our own crews, but we're bringing other people around us into a sense of order. I mentioned earlier on that we did the 3D point cloud scans, which we eventually became a, a regular method with visual effects to work out what the 3D terrain was going to be. In this particular case, beauty first. I loved the look of the quarry. It had the right kind of walls, and I knew we could snow it up. VFX got their 3D scan. I used the 3D scan to work out the contours because the quarry had water in it. Based on that, we were able to work out the best path to remove the water as quickly and safely as possible without endangering any newts, which is our main enemy in Northern Ireland. We drained the quarry. The locations department did all the groundworks, the sculpting. We built the staging. We invented a drainage system in the frozen lake because we knew that we were shooting through winter, so we didn't want any stagnant water building up on top of the lake because the last thing you want is real ice in action scenes. So we were thinking that far ahead. We were about four or five months ahead of the process at that point. And then we built the staging, and then we got on with it. And then the construction guys came at the very, very end and did the last bit of outer ring, and our department painted it blue, and the SFX came and laid their crackling ice. But the whole process, the prep, shoot, the strike, the scheduling, from the deal to the scans was driven and delivered by locations. It was actually a location constructed by us. One of my final ones, Fairhead, I uh, hinted at the All Island Scout, which was really, really great crack. Um, finally, I found Fairhead after probably about 10,000 miles. Um, needed a cliff, a relationship with the sea below. On this particular day, the clouds underneath the cliff, I just love the fact that that showed how high you were. Um, safety concerns, beautiful, but practicality of getting there. I don't show locations unless I can get there in a 4x4, because that means that a tractor and trailer system can get there. That's kind of the shape of how we were servicing our locations towards the end. 9 or 10, double axle, tractors and tri-axle sheep trailers stacked with equipment onto the mountain. When the gear came out, the, cr the crew worked inside the trailers because very often would have rain. So it was a double use value out of the trailers. And that's how we got round. And the money went to the farmers in the region every time. So the community was happy. We always integrated them. We asked them to scout with us to show us where we could and couldn't drive. And I think that's really important that you bring in the local knowledge to fast forward your process on the day when you're in a rush. Scarab 4x4 mobile crane, which could go anywhere that I could go in my, in my Defender, limited crew size, and pretty much the results on the right of the scenes that were shot exactly in that area. And then just the final end of uh, 10 years of work for me, um, that was my final scout, location number 63. Um, there were about 75, including all the plate shots. But that was my last day looking for the ending of the series. And it occurred to me that in 2011, I got a letter of commendation from the LMGA. And that made a massive difference to me, understanding that people actually were connected globally, that there were other people doing what I was doing, that there was a fraternity and a sisterhood of location managers all doing the same things. So thank you again, LMGA, LMGI. And it's been great. Cheers. Thank you.